Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to continue this first day of this course. And the next presenter is Dr. Marta Carvalho from the University of Las Palmas Gran Canaria in Spain. And she will be giving the lecture, Novel Raw Materials in Commercial Lights for Sebring. Marta, the floor is yours. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, David, for the introduction. As David said, I'm Marta Carvalho from the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. And today I'm going to present you some insights regarding the novel raw materials in commercial diets for guilty zebrin. That was one of our goals in this uh, project Perform Fish, uh, specifically uh, under this work package uh, four. So just a brief introduction, as we all know, world population is increasing at an exponential uh, rate. Currently, we are 7.9 billion people in the world, and this number is expected to increase even more up to 9.7 .7 billion people by 2050. So seeing this increasing tendency in human population, a very important question arises to our minds, which is, how can we feed this increasing world population? And how can we feed them in a sustainable and a healthy way at the same time? So in this context, as we all know, also fish is considered one of the healthiest, healthiest foods in the world. Uh, and with this increase of human population, uh, there is also an increase in the demand of fish and other aquatic products in the continuous search for uh, healthy uh, foods. Indeed, we can see in this figure that uh, fish consumption per capita is particularly high in some zones of the, of the world, uh, particularly in America, Asia, and also in Europe. However, for instance, in Europe, despite the so high fish consumption per capita, uh, the European total uh, fish production is still mainly provided by wild uh, fisheries uh, catches, contrary, for instance, to Asia, where various um, aquaculture represents more than 50% uh, of the total uh, fish production, uh, specifically 69%. This uh, reality, particularly in Europe, um, represents a big problem because it is well known that uh, wild fish stocks are under sustainable uh, limits due to over exploitation and other climate events during the last decades. And therefore, there is an urgent need to further develop uh, aquaculture production to meet this uh, global aquatic products demand that is increasing. Indeed, in 2018, from the total fish that went to human consumption, uh, more than 50% was already made by aquaculture products. And this is very important because fish has food for humans is a very rich source of nutrients not only a high quality protein, but also minerals, uh, vitamins, and most importantly, fish is the major source of N3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids like the well-known EPA and DHA for human uh, nutrition. These fatty acids indeed play very important roles in human health uh, besides, besides their being necessary for the correct neural system and vision development in early stages of human life. They are also necessary throughout the human life for maintaining a good coronary neural and immunological health and the prevention of several diseases associated to these biological systems from cardiovascular diseases to uh, some types of cancers, for instance. But these nutrients play also key roles, uh, not only in humans, but also in vertebrates in general, including uh, in fish since they are also involved in several physiological processes in fish that are directly related with the good development at the larval stages, uh, directly related with the growth and fish health that consequently are major factors, as we all know, that influence uh, farm productivity and also the quality of the final product that reach the consumers. Besides uh, the importance of fatty acids in, and lipids for human uh, for fish nutrition, sorry, uh, also protein and um, amino acids are of vital importance for fish and are also involved in the diverse biological mechanisms that also influence again fish growth and health and consequently again farm productivity and product uh, quality. So in this context, to meet the nutritional requirements of uh, farmed fish. 
fish meals and fish oils were the traditional raw materials used since the beginning uh, of uh, aquaculture product production systems and considered as gold ingredients basically because they are uh, similar to the natural feed of the fishes in the natural environment, at least in the uh, carnivorous fish. They have a very good protein and lipid content and a balanced amino acid and fatty acid profile. Uh, fish oil particularly is very rich in uh, N3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids and uh, both raw materials present a high palatability and a high digestibility for uh, most of uh, fish uh, species. However, as I mentioned previously, with the wild fish stocks overexploited, which are uh, were the traditional uh, main origin for the production of these fish meals and fish oils, uh, the price of these raw materials fluctuates and have been increasing during the past two decades, uh, especially. And therefore, nowadays, high inclusions of these marine derived ingredients, uh, fish meals and fish oils in aquaculture feeds are considered not sustainable in the long term neither environmentally nor economically. And so the industry, sorry, and so the industry uh, was forced to decrease the contents of these fish meals and fish uh, oils in aquaculture feeds and to replace them by alternative uh, ingredients. So this has been the scenario of the past two decades, as we can see in this uh, graph, uh, fish meal and fish oils decreased from 70% uh, to 20% uh, of inclusion in aquaculture feeds, while they were replaced by alternative ingredients, uh, mostly from uh, plants. Indeed, plant uh, meals and plant oils have been the most studied alternatives to fish meal and fish oil, respectively, during these past uh, two uh, decades, particularly due to their considerable uh, lower price when compared to fish meal and fish oil and also their high availability in the market and uh, because they are also considered more sustainable and more responsible uh, ingredients when compared to fish meals and fish oils, at least uh, from the ocean uh, preservation biodiversity point of view. However, uh, contrary to a uh, fish meal, uh, some plant meals often present deficient protein contents or an imbalanced amino acid uh, profile besides the presence often of uh, anti-nutritional factors that are uh, undigestible for many uh, fish uh, species, particularly carnivorous uh, fish species. On the other hand, contrary to fish oil that is rich in uh, N3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, as I mentioned uh, previously, Plant oils lack these important fatty acids, which indeed are essential for marine carnivorous species, for instance, like sea bream, for instance, and often uh, present high contents of other fatty acids, N6 and N9 fatty acids, that can lead uh, to an imbalance in the fatty acid metabolism due to the several interactions that uh, exist between uh, several fatty acids that consequently can negatively affect uh, fish uh, health and consequently fish performance. So although the replacement of fish meal and fish oil by these already used lipid alternatives can decrease the, the formulation costs of the feeds and are considered, as I said, more sustainable and more responsible raw materials, um, the high replacement levels, particularly the total replacement of fish meal and fish oils by these plants, alternative uh, ingredients, often leads to negative consequences on fish performance and or health and decrease obviously the EPA and DHA levels in fish flesh, decreasing also uh, the benefits associated to fish consumption for human nutrition and therefore decreasing in some way the nutritional value of the final aquaculture products. For that reason, a more recent topic of research was open in the most recent years for searching novel ing ingredients, not only to decrease even more the use of fish meal and fish oil in aquaculture feeds, but also has alternatives or has complementary raw materials to uh, plant ingredients and other conventional uh, used alternatives. Also, and because they are novel and new ingredients uh, and recently uh, ingredients, they, their still high cost of production is the most limiting factor and therefore uh, is important here to achieve some cost-effective strategies uh, to currently use these raw novel raw materials uh, in aquaculture feeds. 
So in this uh, task of this uh, 4.2 of this work package four of the performed fish, our main aim was to develop sustainable and cost-effective feeds using commercially available and novel raw materials of low ecological footprint that support enhanced growth performance, robustness and welfare of farmed fish. And here I'm going to present some uh, the most significant outputs uh, regarding our trials in uh, Seabrim uh, in this work package that aim to study uh, some uh, novel proteins and novel uh, lipid alternatives. So as novel uh, alternatives to fish meal, we studied the insect meal from the black soldier fly and the single cell protein from the Matilococcus capsulatum, both uh, products uh, available uh, commer uh, commercially. Both insect meal and single cell protein have been shown to have a high protein uh, content and a very balanced amino acid profile that is indeed similar to uh, that of the fish meal. At the same time that they are uh, considered low footprint products and uh, therefore more sustainable to replace the fish meal with uh, a more potential high nutritional quality proteins. So in performed fish uh, with Seabrim, we test five experimental diets uh, a control diet with 15% of fish meal with similar composition has a practical diet uh, used currently for seabrim farming. And then we replace uh, 33 and 66% of that fish meal in the diet by either uh, this insect meal uh, or uh, these uh, single cell uh, protein products, which uh, indeed corresponded to a uh, five and 10% of inclusion levels of these novel uh, raw materials respectively in the feed. So uh, gilded seabrim juveniles were fed these diets for uh, 112 days. And at the end of the feeding period, some key performance indicators related with growth and feed utilization were evaluated, uh, as well as tissue uh, composition. And we uh, analyzed also plasma lysozyme and the expression uh, of some um, general health markers in uh, posterior uh, guts. So I will present now the most relevant results from uh, this uh, trial. And regarding the growth performance, as we can see in this uh, figure, the single cell protein diet showed uh, very similar performance to the control uh, diet at both the two replacement levels. And this indicates that uh, this uh, single cell protein uh, can replace up to 66% of the fish meal in a practical diet for a seed rim without negative consequences on growth and also on feed utilization. And on the, on the contrary, the insect meal could only replace the fish meal up to 33%, uh, which means that 5% uh, of inclusion uh, in the feed of this insect meal, with the higher replacement levels decreasing the fish growth and also decreasing the growth when compared with a single cell uh, protein diets. Indeed, this insect meal with the highest inclusion uh, level, 10%, also showed uh, lower feed intake and also in agreement uh, with the lower uh, in vitro, in vitro autohydrolysis and the lower digestibility rates that this diet showed particularly at high uh, feed consumption uh, rates in the in, vit in vitro digestibility trials that were performed also with these uh, feeds by our par partners uh, uh, in this product, project by uh, the uh, University of uh, Tallahassee. So, uh, and uh, now regarding the fish, general fish health, uh, the insect meal also at 10% of inclusion showed also the lowest plasma lysozyme content in Seabrim, uh, particularly when we compare with the uh, 10% of inclusion of single cell protein that showed the highest uh, plasma lysozyme in Seabrim, which might indicate uh, here uh, that these diets can enhance fish uh, in at immune response, uh, although obviously more studies and more analysis are needed to uh, corroborate this uh, result, obviously. More results regarding, in this case, the expression of health-related genes uh, that were measured in the posterior gut. The single cell proteins and the insect meal uh, diets, uh, these alternative uh, novel diets showed no major alteration of the expression of these several uh, markers related with several aspects of fish health, including also the inflammatory processes when we compare these diets with the control diets. 
And obviously, we need to further study the histomorphological condition of the fish guts, uh, obviously, but these results uh, might indicate that the inclusion of these novel uh, proteins uh, are not further inflammatory raw materials for Cibrim uh, juveniles in diets that already have uh, high contents of vegetable uh, proteins. So in conclusion to these uh, trials in performed fish regarding the, the novel protein sources, the black soldier uh, fly can replace the fish meal up to 33%, uh, which means 5% uh, of inclusion of this fish meal uh, in the diet without consequences in the growth, feed intake and utilization. No effect on the, of this novel protein was observed on the gut general health gene expression as well uh, as on uh, the plasma lysozyme content when we compare with the uh, fish meal uh, control diets. In contrast, the single cell protein from the Matilococcus capsulatus can replace up to 66% of the fish meal uh, in the diet, which means 10% uh, of inclusion of this novel protein without uh, consequences in the growth performance. Uh, again, uh, these diets showed no effect on uh, general health gene expression, but interestingly, the highest inclusion level of this uh, single cell protein, 10% of inclusion, increased uh, the plasma lysozyme in Cibrim, which might indicate um, an enhanced innate immune response uh, of uh, the fish, although we need uh, further studies to corroborate uh, these uh, results. So moving now to the novel alternatives to fish oil that we studied in this uh, project. Here we selected uh, commercially available microalgae uh, oils to test in Cibrim uh, practical uh, diets. Microalgae ha have been shown to, uh, to be promising ingredients for the future of aquaculture industry, mostly because they are very rich in uh, N3 long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, in particular uh, DHA, but also some species containing a uh, considerable amount of EPA. They are uh, microorganisms with uh, very simple nutrient requirements for their cultivation, being autotrophs or very simple heterotrophs, uh, and therefore they are considered. Uh, low footprint uh, products that use, uh, for instance, considerable less land and uh, water when compared with other uh, alternatives like plant cultivation. And so they are considered more sustainable and more responsible ingredients. So in this uh, project, due to the high cost of these uh, microalgae uh, oils, uh, we have uh, tested them in a combination with a less costly uh, poultry oil in an attempt to uh, achieve a cost-effective uh, approach. So in this study, we started with a control uh, practical diet that was based on uh, fish oil, and then we aim to replace the total fish oil in the diet by uh, or either poultry oil alone or a combination of poultry oil and one of the two microalgae oils that were available commercially. Uh, one of the microalgae oils was the Veramaris algal oil that is very rich in um, DHA but also EPA. And the, this is the EV uh, diet that you can see in this uh, table. And the other microalgae oil uh, is the DHA nature oil from the uh, ADM that it's rich in DHA and uh, NC to cause a pentanoic acid. And this is the uh, GD diet that you can see in the uh, table. So we uh, select these two microalgae oils and uh, we combine them uh, with the poultry oil, as I said, in an attempt to have a cost-effective approach to replace uh, the, the total fish oil in the diet. And furthermore, these uh, formulations were also tested on the two different contents of the diet of fish meal in the diet, 15 and 7.5%. So we fed uh, these did Cibrim uh, juveniles uh, to, with these experimental diets for uh, 74 days. And at the end of the feeding period, again, key performance indicators related with growth and feed utilization were calculated. Also, uh, tissue composition were analyzed and, uh, the hepatic, and also the hepatic health status, uh, particularly related with the lipid infiltration in the liver, as well as the lipid metabolism by gene expression was also studied in uh, liver. So moving to the most significant results uh, of uh, the growth performance and feed utilization, the diets with uh, microalgae oils did not affect the growth or the feed utilization compared with a, a fish oil control uh, diet, as we can see. So indicate that they are a suitable uh, total replacers even when combined with uh, uh, poultry oil. Um, 
and meets the essential fatty acid requirements of this species at this stage of uh, development to maximize the growth uh, performance. And these diets, these microalgae diets, also showed, as you can see, an increased growth and uh, better feed utilization when they were compared with a poultry oil uh, diet, which indeed showed the lowest performance due to these insufficient dietary and 3LC PUFA content in poultry oil that lacks these important fatty acids to meet the optimal requirements for, uh, for maximize the growth performance of uh, sea bream. And th these, these results are obviously also highlight the importance of uh, the levels of these essential fatty acids in diets for maximized fish growth performance and not, uh, not only to uh, have a maintenance uh, requirement. Regarding the fatty acid composition of uh, fish tissues, both in uh, fish whole body and also in fillets, this uh, principal component analysis, uh, you can see that it clearly separates uh, the fatty acid composition of the sea bream fed the poultry oil diet uh, from uh, those fed the fish oil and the microalgae diets, basically because uh, the tissues of fish fed the poultry oil diet were um, characterized by their highest contents on oleic acid and linoleic acid and their lowest contents on DHA, also in fillets. And contrary to the uh, tissue composition, tissue fatty acid composition from fish fed the microalgae oils, particularly in fillets that showed the highest uh, contents on uh, DHA, even slightly higher than those fed the fish oil. However, uh, these microalgae oils, the inclusion of these microalgae oils in the feeds were not able to um, increase the EPA levels in fish fillets, particularly to comparable levels of, uh, as the uh, control fish oil uh, diets. So uh, these uh, microalgae uh, diets, uh, due to the, these highest contents of uh, DHA, particularly that it's known to have antithrombogenic and antiheterogenic uh, properties, um, able to maintain a very good lipid quality indexes for human nutrition in fish fillets, particularly the thrombogenicity index, uh, that was even slightly better when we compared with a, a poultry oil diet, although it's not statistically uh, different, and we have to say that. Um, and although this fish, uh, it is true that did not reach the commercial uh, size, but at least we, we aim to calculate these uh, lipid quality indexes to have a first insight uh, of the potential of these uh, novel microalgae oils in the nutritional quality or in the, nutri the future nutritional uh, composition of the uh, product that, uh, the final product that reach the, the consumers. And when evaluate the effect of the concomitant replacement of fish meal and fish oil, as I said, we tested these uh, formulations in two different dietary fish meal contents, uh, 15 and 7.5%. And uh, what we see is that um, when we reduce the fish meal content uh, in the diet, this has a negative effect on uh, fish growth performance and on feed utilization, but here possibly related with the also increase uh, in the vegetable proteins in the diets along with a decrease of the fish meal and possibly uh, affecting here the protein uh, utilization. Some results on the hepatic health status of sea bream. As we can see, uh, fish fed microalgae uh, oils uh, diets showed very similar hepatic lipid uh, contents uh, in liver uh, as those that fed the control fish oil uh, diet, contrary to the poultry oil diet uh, that uh, led to the highest hepatic lipid contents irrespective of the dietary uh, fish meal contents. These high lipid levels that was found uh, in uh, livers of sebrum fed this poultry oil diet were also reflected in the histomorphological condition of the livers, which showed indeed the highest lipid infiltration, as we can see in this, in this graph and in these figures uh, within the hepatocytes, leading also to the highest hepatocyte size and uh, here um, indicating pro and or suggesting possibly uh, a compromise uh, an impaired lipid mobilization in the, in the liver and possibly a compromised hepatic function. Uh, on the contrary, uh, when fish 
are fed uh, diets with the microalgae oils in collusion. Uh, this leads to the lowest hepatic steatosis uh, and the lowest uh, lipid infiltration within the hepatocytes, even uh, as we can see by these figures, even slightly lower than those fed the fish oil diet, which might suppose then improve the hepatocyte function and suggesting a very good lipid mobilization in uh, the liver. So in agreement with the previous uh, results on uh, the livers, uh, fish fed a poultry oil diet also showed an upregulation of some genes that are related with the, the novel synthesis of lipids and therefore here explaining also the highest steatosis that was found in, livers, uh, in the livers of these fish and in contrast uh, with those fed uh, the uh, microalgae oils uh, that uh, down-regulated uh, what this uh, the novel uh, the novel synthesis of lipids when compared to fish to uh, poultry oil sorry and maintain uh, or did not alter when we compare with a, a controlled fish oil uh, diet. And regarding the uh, lipolytic uh, processes, poultry oil also led to an increased expression of these uh, uh, genes related with the lipolytic processes in the liver, um, probably also associated with the excess of the lipids in the liver that needs to be mobilized and oxidized, oxidized contrary to uh, the, the microalgae oils that unaffected apparently the hepatic lipolytic processes in Seabream when we compare with the controlled fish oil uh, diet. So uh, in conclusions, um, to, these, uh, to these trials, microalgae oils uh, were effective total replacements of uh, fish oil in combination with a, a less costly uh, poultry uh, oil, increasing the DHA uh, in fish tissues, including in fillets, but not the EPA, and allowing uh, maintaining a good lipid quality indexes in fish uh, fillets, and also suggesting a very good lipid mobilization uh, and a, a, a healthy uh, hepatic status. Co in contrast, the poultry oil uh, diet led to the lowest growth and the lowest feed utilization, as well as to the lowest uh, contents in EPA and DHA and even slightly increasing uh, the thrombogenicity indexes in uh, fillets of uh, these fish and also uh, possibly impairing lipid metabolism and compromising hepatic function by a deficient lipid mobilization in the liver. And finally, when we reduce the fish meal content in the diet and we replace uh, by uh, alternative uh, vegetable proteins, uh, this negatively affects fish uh, growth uh, performance and utilization. So just before finish my uh, presentation, uh, just to uh, summarize uh, some uh, message to uh, take home regarding these uh, trials that we uh, have conducted in Perform Fish. So regarding the alternative proteins tested, uh, both insect meal from the black soldier, soldier fly and the single cell protein from uh, the Matilococcus capsulatus. Both products showed high potential for replace the fish meal uh, in commercial diets for sea bream. Some maximum substitutions levels of the fish meal that have ne that, um, that do not have uh, negative consequences in, on growth are up to 33%, which means uh, a 5% of inclusion by, um, of uh, insect meal. Uh, and up to 66% of replacement of the fish meal, which means a 10% of inclusion of the uh, single cell uh, protein from Atilococcus capsulatus. Also, uh, no alteration of the gene expression of um, uh, many markers related with the uh, health, general fish health, were observed when fish were uh, are fed uh, these novel uh, alternative uh, diets. And interestingly, um, the uh, inclusion of 10% of single cell protein also increase the plasma lysozyme, which might suppose an enhanced innate immune uh, response in those fish, although we need obviously uh, to, um, to study uh, further this, but this opens uh, uh, a new window for uh, uh, oh, another type of uh, studies. And finally, regarding the alternative lipids test, microalgae oils are uh, rich in omega-3 fatty acids, particularly in DHA, that are able to meet the Seabream uh, requirements for essential fatty acids to maximize the growth performance. Uh, the total fish oil replacement by uh, these uh, products leads to similar uh, performance and feed utilization as a conventional uh, fish oil uh, diet and also promotes the hepatic lipid mobilization uh, in Seabream. 
Furthermore, these microalgae oils can be uh, also combined with less costly lipid sources like the, the poultry oil has a cost-effective strategy for increasing the dietary contents of uh, in M3LC PUFA and also for replacing uh, fish oil and achieving a more responsible and sustainable uh, aquaculture uh, feeds. And finally, uh, these microalgae oils uh, inclusion in the diet are also likely to maintain the at least the DHA levels in fish fillets and potentially um, maintain a good lipid quality indexes in fish fillets that are a very important point also from the, from the consumer point of view. Just as future uh, perspectives, obviously, um, after conducting these uh, trials in this uh, project with these novel ingredients, validate these raw materials using real farming conditions are uh, obviously necessary, uh, as well as a more detailed environmental assessment of the feeds containing these novel ingredients are also of, this is also of interest since by now, we should not only formulate, obviously, to meet uh, the uh, fish nutritional requirements uh, or to increase the uh, farm productivity, but also we need to uh, meet with the sustainability criteria nowadays under this uh, changing world. Um, and also uh, noteworthy that uh, these raw materials that were selected for this project uh, and studied in this work package are not the only novel raw materials of the present. Many others have been emerging in the market with very promising results also, like uh, krill meal, krill oil, genetically modified or, um, oil crops, uh, fish fur products, etc. So there is a plenty of novel feed ingredients that needs and are being studied uh, for uh, achieve a, a, a brighter and a, a, a more sustainable future for the aquaculture feed industry. And obviously a further step would be also to test the combination uh, uh, in the same uh, formulation of novel proteins and novel uh, lipid sources. Thank you very much for your attention.